Folks, what I need to be doing is getting on a plane to go to Starbase, because Flight 9 is currently no earlier than Tuesday, the 27th. That's just a couple days away. But here, I'm recording another Starbase summary. We'll get there. Working on the ship there, 35, going around the backside of Mega Bay 1, coming over through the assembly yard area, turning the corner out to Highway 4, waits for a little bit, turns on to Highway 4, and in this summary there are going to be some fantastic views. For the first time, we've got Jerry Pike out there at Starbase. If you've seen Jerry's fantastic drone footage out there at Cape Canaveral of boosters coming back into port at Starbase, We've got this insanely good video, drone video, of the ship rolling down Highway 4 towards Massey's for its testing. Now, some of these are actually in our shop if you want a metal print of some of these crazy, almost, you got a little Martian effect there in the background with the salt flats, the sand flats there. Uh, but there are some of these over at shop.nasaspaceflight.com if you'd like to support what we do and Jerry's awesome drone photography. Hey, also, uh, here there is no TFR currently. There's a TFR out by the launch site, there's a TFR over by Massey's, but there is a gap in between the TFRs that's far enough away from the launch site and far enough away from Massey's where there's no reason to have a TFR here. So uh, flying outside of the existing TFRs for the drone shots here, of course, Jerry, a uh, professional drone photographer, drone videographer, and keeping close track of exactly where that drone was in reference to the TFRs. But there, going around Highway 4, here on this end we had Jack set up near the turn to Massey's. Traffic backed up behind Jack here. You see the do not pass signs? They're not kidding. Don't pass. Don't pass the ship. The two sets of SPMTs, the SPM driver getting the workout, walking along beside, and Jack here to meet the ship over at the turn to Massey's. It is fantastic when we've got more folks out there covering stuff because we can do things like that. It's remote camera operators operating, operating SBL cameras. We've got a drone as it passes our, our uh, river site. We've got Jack over here at the turn. We sort of had it from all angles with all sorts of different cameras as we get ready to see this thing fly. <laughs> it's supposed to be flying next week sometime. But there goes that static fire stand, the uh, SFS. Say that 10 times fast. Apparently a lot of uh, opportunities for photographs there as well. If you're curious about some of the acronyms, we did release the acronym video as well. We had been sort of talking about that for a while, but we have like, uh, what is that? Video came out to be like 20 minutes long, talking about all sorts of different acronyms you may hear around Starbase. The SPMT, OLM, OLIT, BQD, etc., etc. Check a link down into the description if you want to check out the acronym video as well and get caught up on your Starbase acronyms. Now we've got some shots from Caesar as they prepare the ship for its testing over here. At this point, there were some questions. Uh, a lot of times you go to Massey's, and what you do at Massey's is a static fire test. Of course, there's cryo proofs and stuff like that as well. So at this point, sort of wondering, like, are, are they going to, do another static fire? Do they replace an engine? Do they repair an engine? We know that they had some issues with the previous static fires. Right there, that one, the explosive placard likely means ship 35 has its FTS in. They put up that big orange one octagon. What is that, a barbecue at Massey's? <laughs> Seriously? It's just barbecuing over at Massey's night. Uh, the 18.1 test tank as well, we've seen that over there. But uh, back to the ship, we're wondering, are they going to do a, another static fire? Are they going to do a cryo test? Are they going to do a spin prime? Are they going to do a... We haven't seen a pre burner in a while. Uh, but what were they going to do? Well, the answer is later in the video. It is here contained in the footage that we are talking about. Let's head back over to the production site. We've got a little skid steer, bobcat, my bobber, moving some lights around. We've got, yes, we're just picking those things up and moving them. I love it. We saw a lot of the uh, concrete being broken up with that big excavator jackhammer thing. Here out behind the Mega Bay is the HLS mock-up nose cone. Of course, over there, they're tearing up all that concrete as they prepare for proper foundations and pilings to support the Giga Bay 
that will go in the position of the high bay and the star bay, uh, the Stargate building that used to be there. It's already gone. It would have been blocking the HLS no cone, nose cone in the lower left of this view. But uh, expecting a lot of concrete work there, maybe some drilling work as they prepare to put the gigabay in. There's the temporary Old West style wall at the Star Factory, literally taped with plastic sheeting around some of the corners. Probably going to be connected to the Gigabay when it comes in there. That whole transfer aisle area is probably not a thing anymore. Here we've got some folks up on a AWP. It stands for Aerial. Oh, I shouldn't tell you. I should just tell you to watch the acronym video. Uh, it's an aerial work platform. Working on the sign. Then we're going to hop over to Orbital Pad B. What are they carrying spools of stuff? They're just like carrying spools of wire. Nice. One step at a time. <laughs> I mean, that's probably what I'd do. <laughs> Working hard. It's probably hot out there. I don't need to, like, show off to anybody and balance it on my head and walk up the whole thing. I'd, I'd happily hump that thing up the stairs one stair at a time. But we continue to see some... Uh, are we quite into the finishing stage yet? I don't know if I'd call it finishing work yet, but just work to, to continue all the wiring, probably sensors, control cables, all sorts of stuff that they're putting around the structure of Pad B. Here we've got a bird looking for some lunch or dinner. Looks like that might have been a snowy egret per the label. Got a little bit of cool up-close shots of some earthwork here as well. Caesar's got some really cool crew working shots. Good job, Caesar. Those, the vests, like the bright vest and the work attire with the uh, brown dirt behind them was really a, uh, I feel like an art critic. The juxtaposition of work versus the natural environment. Some, I don't know. Something like that. Here, here, have an argon tank. 1951. Must be argon. It says it real big, and then it also says argon on the label. Let's hop back over here. This is now coming from May 22nd, a couple days back, and this is the Ship 35 testing that was occurring over there at Massey's. Didn't see a lot there in that spooling up, but more to come. Here we've got some more tests of the GSE, another acronym mentioned in the video. Over at the launch site, you can see the frosty bits and the vapors going around everywhere, those massive pumps, the big electric motors. Air torque, air torque. Look at that, you can see where the insulation is. You see the black insulation there, then you see the white, I guess lesser or non-insulated area that has the frost formed on the outside. And look at the flange. Wow, that is, Caesar, that is a fantastic shot. Look at the insulated segments and then the flange segment. That really shows how that insulation is doing work, or I guess technically not preventing work from being performed. Preventing the, the transfer of heat would be the thing that the insulation is doing. There. Ah, you know how it is. I see things in the video, I talk about it. We've got some more chopstick load testing. I saw a ton of great comments in the prior video about why they installed the extension cables. Uh, some great guesses. I don't have any confirmed information as to exactly why it is, but some of the guesses I saw were putting the weight down low simulates the center of mass of the booster better. A lot of the mass of a booster hanging from the chopsticks is down low because of all the Raptor engines on the bottom of the booster. I also saw some people guessing that potentially they didn't have to pump the water as high. Um, so you could you could change the mass, the load, I guess, on the chopsticks by pumping water in or out while they're at the top, but you didn't have to pump the water all the way to the top. What's the actual answer? Well, why couldn't it be a combination of those things? But I, I love to see some critical thinking down into the comments of folks sort of thinking through the physics or the engineering of, of why some of the things we see are the way they are. There you go. Look. There's the long extensions, and then you can see the water lines hooked into the chopsticks, or sorry, into the water bags, and there they're filling up, it looks like. And those chopsticks are all the way at the top of the tower, and the water bags are all the way at the bottom, but they're literally changing the load on the chopsticks here. Removing water re reduces the load, increasing water in the bags increases the load, but you don't have to pump the water up to the top of the tower. The high bay disassembly continues. I don't know how many of y'all saw the last video, which we aptly labeled the skeleton of the high bay. But uh, this has been coming down. If you're over there on SBL, we've seen some of these wall segments be pulled down now. And the high bay is quite literally on its last legs. He is, is he cutting an angle? Is this like... You know, timber, you know how they cut the wedge in the tree and they cut the back part off and they control the direction the tree falls in. I wonder if that's the same concept with the steel there. 
Over in the Rocket Garden, we got some passing clouds in the background with a couple old boosters back there. All right, here is the spin prime of Ship 36. Spoilers, it said right there on the label, what happened was a spin prime. There it is. Yeah, I know. That's not very exciting. It's exciting because they need to pass that test so that they can actually get the ship on top of the booster and go for Flight 9. Uh, not a lot of fire, not a lot of force, just a spin prime, just running some of that cryogenic propellant through the engines to make sure that the valves and sensors and pressurization and everything like that work as expected. But after what must have been a successful spin prime, the ship rolling back from Massey's. More fantastic views from our river spot over here. As it passes off into the sunrise, sunset. What time did that? I think that happened early in the morning, if I remember correctly. Yeah, judging by the lighting angles here. There we go back through the assembly yard, back between the mega bays, and then back into mega bay two. Da -da 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 -da. There you see ship 35 in mega bay two. Thing to watch now. See that that work platform? Well, the lower work platform was around the Starlink loading door, sort of the Pez dispenser door. Here, this work platform was working around the hinges there for the flaps. We'll see if we get another shot of that in a second. Star Factory Corner wrapped up. Was not kidding about the plastic sheeting and tape to seal that corner. I guess they expect that's going to be temporary. I think it's probably going to be more temporary than they think out there in the wind of South Texas. Man, look at all the scaffolding on Pad B there. Propellant deliveries. Got a truck backing in. Is that the shuttle tanker? Yeah, <laughs> that's one of the that's the shuttle outer space themed tanker. I love it. But the trucks backing into the stations where they hook up and unload. Some blowdowns. Oh, look on the look on the BQD there. You see the Q, the quick disconnect plate, upper center left of your screen, and uh, you see them blowing some stuff through there. Maybe blowing out the lines, making sure the lines are cleaned out. There's no fod in there. Just sort of cleaning that entire thing out. Because you don't want to work on the tank farm back somewhere else in the tank farm. And while you're working, you get a little bit of something in there, a little scree, grinding dust or something. Uh, so they're just blowing that out to clean that out, I would guess. If you're like, yeah, that's that's dumb. That's not what they do. They have a filter. I'm pretty sure that's not a thing that needs pretty high flow filters. Uh, anyways, blowing it out. Got some more shop stick testing. Question, which pad is this? All right, I'm not going to tell you. Down in the comments, tell me which pad this is. Dang it, I hope it wasn't on the label. Ah, it might have been on the label. Whatever. There are clues on the screen you can use to tell which pad you're looking at. <laughs> we end with a quiz. I hope it's not an easier quiz than I thought. But, folks, my next task is to hop on a plane to head out to Starbase. My name is John. If I apply to you down in the comments, you may see me as Das. See if we can get you some other commentary as well. I know Alex has been super busy lately. But, as always, appreciate y'all watching this Starbase summary. And we will see you nerds later.